da, da, da. we got this video from Evan that says Marvel's Venom needs to happen. Featuring my boy Comic Blast Keenan. Uh I'll leave a link down to um both their channels down below. Uh let's go ahead and jump right into it because like I'm interested. World. I saved your life. And you won't save mine. Do you want me to die? Insomniac to make a Venom game right freaking now, Spidey yes. Squad. But regardless, welcome back, true believers, and all you spectacular Spidey fans, as well as all you vicious Venom fans out there, to another extremely exciting video. Mm -hmm. Where if the message somehow wasn't already fully clear enough, is that we undoubtedly 110% need, at some point down the line, a fully triple A standalone Venom game completely developed by Insomniac and Marvel Games. And this isn't simply due to the fact that Venom is an absolutely amazing character as a whole, but it would also be a fantastic way for Insomniac yep. to continue developing the Venom that they've already thoroughly crafted. Not just in the case of Venom being a completely playable character in Marvel Spider-Man 2, which was hands down the best mission within the entire game, but it would also allow Insomniac's writers to further evolve Venom's storyline within the context of the Marvel Marvel Spider-Man universe. As exactly. This is the one thing that this is the one thing that a lot of, I I'm actually 100% like this cuz like I want Venom to stick around, you know what I'm saying? Like uh hell, hell yeah, we need we need hell yeah, we need a Venom game. We need a Venom game. We will have Venom. We can fight we'll, we'll be playing as Venom. We can fight Carnage. I agree. I agree cuz like if they're planning to do um cuz like I have this idea where Carnage is going to appear in a DLC and after that, we fight him, and then he goes on, and after that, he goes on to somewhere else to actually say, oh, right, oh great, this plane is filled or whatever. And then after that, Venom comes back. Now, another thing, too, that I'm really hoping that Evan probably will, well, shout out to Evan, by the way. I'm really hoping that they uh, touch on the moveset and everything, because, like, if you guys know, in my video I made a while back about, you know, things that we might see. I'm thinking that they're going to touch on the moves and stuff like that. Cause um, if you guys didn't know, when Peter had the symbiote, there was four slots. There, there was like four move slots, right? When we're on, when we're playing as Venom, notice how Venom only has two moves here. Notice how there could be another. Notice how there could be two more. As well as Insomniac getting a second chance to continue developing Venom's core characteristics and iconic personality, which we only caught small glimpses of near the latter half of Marvel Spider-Man 2's story. But again, as I already thoroughly analyzed within my Venom breakdown video, yep. is that Marvel Spider-Man 2, just like what we saw with Spider-Man PS4, is more akin to that of a thorough origin story of each of Spider-Man's iconic villains, where we initially started with Otto Octavius becoming Dr. Octopus and have seen fully witnessed the origin of Harry Osborn becoming Venom in Insomniac Spider-Man universe. But the most important thing to take away from all this is that Venom is an immensely beloved character and would absolutely fit the notion for receiving his completely own individual standalone game. Which is why I've once again reunited with my unbelievably good friend and reoccurring special guest on the channel in order to talk about this Venom game in more detail with the one and only Comic, Comic Blast, Blast Keenan, Keenan. Where Keenan and I not only already did a previous collab video in the past talking about who exactly we could see returning as Venom within Insomniac's universe, but we also did a brand new collab on his channel, which you should most definitely check out, as to why exactly we think Marvel's Wolverine is going to be an unbelievable masterpiece. Oh so yeah, we're checking out both these videos like today. Myself and Keenan, who are unbelievably excited for the overall future of any and all upcoming Marvel games, then make sure to whip that like button and subscribe to the channel for any and all types of marvel games videos down the line all thank right. you once again evan for having me back on the channel to discuss why we need a venom game yes, i think i speak for most fans out there when i say that 
Even though I absolutely loved Marvel Spider-Man 2 and would give it a 9.5 out of 10, the game could have absolutely used a little bit more time with Venom. Venom's introduction was an epic one. I love that as soon as Venom is introduced in Marvel Spider-Man 2, yep. Insomniac immediately gave us control over that character. The time we spent playing as Venom certainly was a rush and was probably one of the highlights of the game, which just left me, and I'm sure you Evan as well, wanting more of that. The good thing for yes. us fans is that the narrative director of Marvel Spider-Man 2, John Paquette, stated before the release of Marvel Spider-Man 2 that when it came to the idea of a Venom spinoff game, that they were going to see how the fans react, and then they're going to listen to the fans. Well, if you're someone... That's one of the things that I like. They're going to listen. We're going we're gonna to get that. We're, we're going to get that. We're going to get that. We're going to get that, child. We're going to get that. Like me and Evan, then that is music to your ears. Because the mm -hmm. overwhelming fan feedback since the release of Marvel Spider Man 2 is that we need more Venom. We want a Venom game. We got the villainous side of Venom in Marvel Spider Man 2, and now we are ready for that lethal protector version of Venom with Harry as Venom. When yes. did the idea fall? Yes. Yes, chat. We need more of the we need more of that 19 inches. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I know. I know. I should be saying. I, I know. I know. But come on. We need more of that. We need more of that 19 inches. We need more. I'm with Keenan on this. Venom, you know, Harry being Venom kind of come about and how important was it for you as a team to implement that in a way that feels like you're going on a journey with the characters and it feels like an authentic turn really really uh i would say probably halfway through spider-man one mm -hmm. like because we you know we had that teaser scene that shows no norman in the tank and harry with the symbiote right so we knew yeah. that i mean yes we we're kind of painting ourselves in the corner like you better do i mean we could have like said oh that's another thing but we we knew that's where we wanted to go right and i think that you know, I had, there was a reason why the black suit wasn't, the symbiote suit wasn't in that first game. I think I even said at one point after the game ship, I'm like, oh, that, that kind of story, that it needs its own game, and that's what we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, and I think the, kind of the, the, our kind of guiding light through this whole nine years of working on Spider-Man has been like, let's respect the DNA of the franchise. Yeah. Remember they can use Venom's cousins, all right? let's not be afraid to they mix could. things up. So for example, I think Venom's a good example of that. Like you look at Venom, Yep. If you're a fan of Venom, I hope when you see Venom, you're like, oh, that's I recognize that character. He has the, mm -hmm. the traits, the personality, the characteristics of a great Venom. But the host is different. It's Harry because we yeah. wanted to have more of a we want to have a character who had more of an emotional attachment to our heroes. The number one thing. Exactly. And that's one thing that and exactly. And that's one thing that no one doesn't really understand is that I respect. Here's the thing. This, this is what I keep on saying. Like, I like Eddie. Like, he's the OG. No one can replace the OG host. But for Marvel Spider-Man 2, how would that work? Because, like, if Eddie was the host, there would have been no attachment at all. Like, according to, like, from the lore, it seems that Peter and Eddie are good. Like, there's no, like, there's no beef with each other. So, like, how would that even work for a story? So, I think that it's best if that's one of the reasons why I say, like, I would prefer Venom to stay hairy. That we, we talked about Venom was we want to make it our own story. Yeah. And we and it was, and this is going to sound, I hope this doesn't come across cheese, like, how can we make this an emotional Venom story? Mm. Yeah. And I that was kind of the thing, like, I'm really proud of is that, you know, even though Harry's motivation once he had the symbiote is, I mean, what he wants to do healing the world is, right the way he's going about it through the symbiote is wrong so i think we always want to that's kind of important to us is like there's something with every whether it's you know auto whether it's um tinker and now it's whether it's venom there's yep. something you can connect to yeah. for the, with the with the villain in my opinion venom right. is just way too big of a character 
in the world of Spider-Man to just be one and Spider-Man done Harry with was also him. Venom and it Insomniac went good. Insomniac really exactly. laid the foundation for a playable Venom within Marvel Spider-Man 2, but there is just so much more that could be expanded on when it comes to gameplay with the character, mm -hmm. such as improving traversal with things such as super jumps, kind of like the Hulk would have, Venom wings, which we already saw in action in Marvel Spider-Man 2, and yeah. even have him swing from building to building. See, now that's fire. Me and Ke oh my gosh, dude. Me and Keenan are both on the same level, bro. Me and Comic Blast Keenan, we're on the same level with this, bro. I literally said the exact same thing in my things that we need to see Venom video on things that we need to see from Venom. Like, like I said before, like we need four new slots because like you guys already know. Well, we don't need four new slots, my bad. You guys already know, like we only have two moves as Venom. But when the symbiote was on Peter, we had we had we had four. The level I am to you. Oh, potato, you're always you're 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 always on my level. Y'all are always on my level. Bro, me and Keenan think the same. Like like moves that can involve like there's like literally like like I said before, like there's like concept art of like more moves that Venom was going to have. So they could give us some of those. Gotta find her. Got some choice. <laughs> where, where, where? What a wuss. Hey, what a race? <laughs> Same thing. Parker hates it when I get the drop on him. I hate it when he gets the drop on me. When it comes to the combat, there is just so much more that could be done to enhance the experience of fighting as Venom. It felt like Insomniac really gave us the basics when it came to Venom's combat in Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Almost mm -hmm. as if this would be the base set of moves when starting a game. But there could be so much more to do if Venom was given his own skill tree within his own game. Just think of all the creative abilities and moves that could be unlocked for Venom. Yep. I'm telling you, the combat for Venom in Marvel. Like, look at this, bro. Like, this is perfect. We need two more moves. Oh, man. See, look, we need two more moves. That's all he's missing for this game is two more moves. Like, you see why this has to happen? We're missing two more moves. Spider-Man 2 was just a tease of what is possible if we got a Venom standalone game. In Marvel Spider-Man 2, Venom only has two major abilities using the L1 yes, button. Yes, touching on it. You had the option to either press circle or square to activate an ability. It's almost as if they left the X in the triangle button empty because it could be utilized in the future. And just imagine if Venom had his own rage mode like Peter did when he had the symbiote suit by hitting that L3 and R3 button at the same time. That would be epic. Shout out to um Will. I don't know if you're in here, but shout out to Will. Will William Spider, shout out, shout out to you. Shout massive huge shout out to you. They are touch they're touching on our idea. They're touching on it. Or your idea. They're touching on both um they're touching on uh, both of our ideas. You could also really pull off some amazing and gruesome combat in a solo game for Venom. In Marvel Spider-Man 2. You could only go so violent because you were restricted by the T rating for the game. Right. But if you were able to give Venom a standalone game, then you could make that game a rated M game. Exactly. You could get so creative with the combat and really pull off some gruesome takedowns. It's very likely that Marvel's Wolverine is going to be rated M, so I don't think it's unlikely that a game like Venom could would... be rated M as well. I feel like rated M really serves that character better. But overall, I think that there is so much potential to expand on what Insomniac has started in Marvel Spider-Man 2 by making Venom, Venom, Venom ball abilities character. may and the best maybe way to would work. It would. That is by giving him his own solo game, yeah. which is something that us fans are really clamoring for. Evan, back to you. Let's heal the world. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Shout out to Will, by the way. There. Shout, shout out to uh, William Spider. I don't know Will. Shout, uh, shout out to William Spider if he's in here. They touched on the rage mode idea 
but like with a rage mode though like here's the thing with here's here's uh the thing with um the rage mode since harry no longer has the meteorite he would be in control of his agent venom form like he was before like whenever he was agent venom so the rage mode could work similar to him staying in his agent form and after that he get and after that we press l3 r3 and he turned into his hulking venom form Together. Well said as always, Keenan, because not only would Insomniac do an absolutely fantastic job of further evolving the core gameplay mechanics that have already been set forth within Venom's moveset as to what we already saw in full display in Marvel Spider-Man 2, but giving Venom his own completely dedicated yeah, AAA game want. would also be the perfect chance to completely deliver an incredibly detailed and extremely emotional Venom storyline, which directly showcases the bond and connection that Harry has with the with symbiote, Ethan. as well as how exactly he could have the ability to learn to control the power that the symbiote provides him as a means to truly become the iconic lethal protector anti-hero that the majority of Venom fans know and love. Yep. For starters, it was already reported by the main man himself who plays Venom in Marvel Spider-Man 2 Todd. of Tony Todd all the way back in November of 2023, specifically during the San Francisco Fan Expo, which I was personally in attendance for, Tony stated during a panel presentation is that only approximately 10% of his recorded dialogue that he did as Venom did end up making the cut for the final product of Marvel Spider-Man 2. Right. And that there is a possible chance that the other recorded dialogue that he did as Venom could be saved sometime later down the line. Now, as for whether or not these unutilized recorded Venom lines are in fact going to be saved for a Venom game is still unknown. But at the very least, it does show Tony's dedication to the character of Venom. And hands down that he would undoubtedly agree to returning to play as the character if he was offered the chance. But yes. for the case of Venom as a character, Tony Todd obviously makes up half of who Venom is. And rather is that the symbiote's main host of Harry Osborn would more than likely maybe be R1 seen as this game's heavy abilities maybe will work. So if maybe we're able to sense. actually end up playing as I don't know, Harry I kinda himself, like, I don't know, I like that being one. a giant 19 foot tall monster, just like yes. with what we were able to do with playing as Peter Parker and Miles Morales outside of their Spider-Man suits, as well as with playing as Mary Jane Watson and even the addition of Haley Cooper, then it's going to make the entire narrative that we could see evolve with Venom all the more impactful to Harry's story, as well as the characters that he could end up interacting with. And Let's Speaking of characters, is that there is a pretty prominent individual, which was directly revealed at the very end. Let's go. I want to see Harry as Venom. I want to see Harry. I want to see Insomniac Venom speak to Insom Carnage. End of Marvel Spider-Man 2 second post credit scene. And in case you forgot, I am referring to the newly introduced spider heroine with the one and only Cindy Moon as Silk. Now let's be totally honest, Silk as a standalone character is nowhere near as popular as Venom. So Insomniac developing a completely standalone Silk game in comparison to that of Venom would straight up make absolutely no lick of sense whatsoever, both from that of a production perspective as well as a financial perspective but what i could see happening is that if venom does end up getting his own standalone game we could see silk being introduced as her own Bro, spider do hero Eric during some point of this game um, story he could. which would then if make it easier to venom transition form, into the inevitable marvel spider-man 3 where peter and miles are already thoroughly established characters so if insomniac were to then try and juggle the development of silk on top of bringing in other characters like green goblin and the return of dr octopus it would simply be that there is too much going on but having a game where venom could learn to try and be more of an anti-hero in comparison to a villain while mm -hmm. also showcasing the growth of cindy moon becoming her own hero as silk similar to what we saw with miles getting his own standalone game and also introducing other characters like the prowler and tinkerer could yep. be a very interesting line to balance but the most important thing to take into consideration when making a standalone venom game is what exactly would this game's core story end up being as well as how it could properly end up transitioning into the future of Insomniac's universe with Marvel's Spider-Man 3. And if you played through Marvel's Spider-Man 2, the resolution of what this game story could be, as well as its overall payoff, is pretty damn obvious. Let there be carnage. 
Carnage to Venom is what the Joker is to Batman. And seeing how he already got a thorough setup of Cletus Cassidy getting his hands on a symbiote during the very end of the Flame side quests, then yep. what would be even better than Spider-Man fighting Carnage? Well, in this case, being able to play through a complete next-gen slugfest between both Venom and Carnage, and having Carnage be the final boss fight for Venom to take down during his own standalone game, would mm -hmm. be nothing short of pure poetry. Plus, I also think that having the symbiote storyline fully wrap up within Marvel's Spider-Man 2, as well as a possible Venom spin-off game, would be far better for Insomniac to do, rather than having the symbiotes continue somehow into Marvel's Spider-Man 3's campaign. And right. by some chance, if we end up seeing Harry Osborn sacrifice himself as Venom in order to stop Carnage, that would easily make the transition of Norman Osborn becoming the Green Goblin go on to hit that much harder. And I know for a fact that Keenan and I cannot wait. Ooh. In the end, everybody, there is a seemingly infinite amount of possibilities that Insomniac could take when making a fully AAA standalone Venom game. Not just simply in the case of fan service to give people a Venom game just for the sake of doing so, but it could also provide an incredibly memorable Venom storyline, which would go on to do justice not only for the character of Venom himself, but for this main iteration of Venom that Insomniac have already established in Marvel's Spider-Man 2. And right. merely being able to see the return of Graham Phillips as Harry Osborn, as well as Tony Todd as Venom, that would easily be a dream come true. But we're just gonna have to wait and see as to what exactly Insomniac has in store. And with all that said, everybody, that's the video I have for all you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. On a scale of 1 Bro, to 10, how badly do you want this Insomniac Venom to make a spin-off Venom game? And if there was one thing that you would want to incorporate within this game, what would you choose? Let me know what you think. Be sure to leave a like on the video. We need this Venom game. My channel and Keenan's for any Bro, more Marvel Spider-Man 2 and other Marvel games videos down the line. Stay rumored. spectacular Spidey fans and stay vicious Venom fans. And until next time, peace out. We need it.